with a man child and laid him in a manger and called his name Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, God in the flesh. We see how his promises were brought to pass. Come on, brother. I feel sorry for you today if all you all you guys in the Old Testament. Yeah, come on. Not that it's bad, not that it's not good. Listen, I ain't be living in the Old Testament. We've got to have it. That's right. All scripture. We gotta have it. Amen. <clears throat> It shows us how God promised things. Yes, sir. And the New Testament shows us how He brought some of them things to pass. Come on. There's still some things we're waiting to, for to happen. That's it. Some things that were promised in the Old and in the New Testament. That's right. The promises were confirmed. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're talking about the promises of God are for you. Amen. Amen. You know what a promissory note is? Yes. It's a written promise. Hey. Amen? It's a written promise to pay. The first part of that promissory means something containing or involving or having the nature of a promise. Containing or conveying a promise or assurance, a guarantee, and a warranty. Yes. Amen? Come on. A promissory note is something that you write and you say, I promise yeah. that I'm going to give Brother David this amount. Uh -huh. I'm going to pay Brother David this amount. That's what this is. Yeah. Come on. This is a promissory note. Right. And everything in here has already been paid for by Jesus Christ and what He did at the cross. Yes, sir. Every benefit in it, the Father has said, if you will come unto me, I will in no wise cast you out. Amen. Hallelujah. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. That's a promise for you today. That's it, brother. Come unto me, all ye that labor. Yes, sir. And are heavy laden. Absolutely. This is a book of promises. Instead of a promissory note, maybe I should have called this sermon the promissory book. All right. Because from front to back, the promises are yours. Come on, brother. God's word doesn't change. Amen. That's right. He promised that Jesus would come. What Amen. happened? Jesus came. That's it. To in spite of all of the efforts of the devil. In spite of all of the efforts of man, in spite of all of the efforts of the angry Jews of that day and the Sanhedrin and all the others, yeah. in spite of the fact that they took him and nailed him to the cross, which was really only only uh, uh, fulfilling promises that had already been made in the Old Testament, Amen. They said, "Well, we'll show you." Not God was showing them. Hallelujah! He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, Amen. Hallelujah! His iniquities he bore all of man's iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. This was a fulfillment as He walked the Via Della Rosa up to Mount Calvary to lay down His life. He said, no man takes it from me. I lay it down freely. And just like I lay it down, I'm going to take it up and I'm going to come forth victorious over death and the grave. Amen. This was a promise exactly. that God had made. Yeah. To his people. I'm sending a redeemer. Absolutely. I'm sending a Messiah. Come on. And then he comes forth out of the womb of a virgin. That's it. 33 and a half years later, he walks the Via Della Rosa. Yeah. Climbs to the top of Mount Calvary, lays down his life for you. And with the last breath he's got, he says, It is finished. Come on. It is finished. Yeah. The promise that God had made so many hundreds of years before. Yeah. Some people got tired of waiting. Come on. See, that's what we wrong, got wrong with a lot of people today. That's right. They've got tired of waiting for His return. Amen. Well, the Bible talks about that too. Yes. It says in the last days there will be a lot of scoffers oh. saying, where is the promise yeah. of His return? Hallelujah. See, we weren't just promised that He'd come the first time in a manger, but we were promised He'd come a second time in all of His glory, in the clouds of heaven, that the Lord would descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ going to kick the dirt off and come up out of the ground and go to be with the Lord. And then those of us, if we're blessed to live long enough and we still remain, those of us which are alive and remain are going to be called up together to meet Him in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. That's a promise. Yes, sir. I'm telling you this morning, God's promises are yea and amen. Amen. He has given you a promissory note. He has given you His pledge. Right. He has given you a guarantee. Come on. Amen. That's true. A guarantee. Yes, sir. It goes on down here in this 15th chapter of Romans. 
talks about Isaiah in the 12th verse says that Isaiah said, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Yeah. For the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing yeah. that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Right. And Gentiles he's talking about is you. Come on. Amen? Amen. In his, what's the Bible say? Those that were afar off right. can now be made nigh right. by the blood. Come on. We're talking about the promises of God. Right. Over there where it says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord yeah. shall be saved. Amen. He didn't say a certain sect of people or just the Jewish people or just the Israelites. Oh. He said, Whosoever, Whosoever. It don't matter whether you're an American, you're a Canadian, you're a Nigerian, no matter where you're at, who you are, Whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus right. shall be saved. Amen. That's a promise. That's true. And you can count on that. Yes, sir. You count on God's promises, Mama. Amen. That's true. Over there where David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the sea begging for bread. You count on that. Amen. You may not have what you want to eat, but God's going to make sure you've got something to eat. That's right. Oh, did you hear what I said? It may not be what your old flesh desires all the time, but God's going to make sure you've got something. Come on. And by looking at you, He's making sure you've got plenty. Amen. God's going to provide. All right. Always has. Exactly. Always will. Yes. Hundred years from now, when they write down history, they're not going to say, you know, yes. David Fincher starved to death because God forsook him. No, 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 no. God has always made a way Amen. for his people. Yes, sir. Amen. That's true. My goodness. Praise the Lord. So the cross prophesied by the prophets of old. Jesus himself would say in John, the third chapter, the fourteenth verse. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Yeah. That whosoever believeth. Did you hear that? Come on. Whosoever believeth. Yeah. He didn't say, well, if the Jews believe. Yeah. Uh, if the, for the Israelites that believe. For the Pentecostals yeah. that believe. No. For the Catholics that believe. For whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Listen to this. Y'all know this in my heart. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Will you let me add a little bit here? These are my words, not God's, but this is the intent of it. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn Rodney, but that Rodney through Him yeah. might be saved. Are you in the world? On. You're on this old planet, ain't you? Yes, and He was talking to you. Yes. He that believeth on Him is not condemned. Right. And he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Listen, God promises you heaven. Yes. If you will accept His way, Come on. not your way. Yeah. Yeah. we got too many people saying, well, I'll get there my way. I know you won't. That's it. You'll get there God's way or you'll split hell wide open. Right. Oh, amen. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You ain't in to get there praying to Mary. That's right. You ain't in to get there praying to St. Matthew. Got a letter in the mail this week from St. Matthew's people. Wishing blessings upon my household. From all that St. Matthew has to give, I threw it in the trash. Amen. Oh, there ain't but one saint. <laughs> there ain't but one mediator. I would put it that way. Amen. <laughs> there ain't but one communicator between me and the Father, and that's the Son. That's it, and it's not one of the apostles. It's not one of the popes. That's Amen. It. I don't care how much you deify the Pope or your priest. He ain't it. That's it. Say it. Amen. That's Gotta be Jesus. Amen. So Jesus promised eternal life. Right. So you can count on that. Amen. Say, Brother Billy, how do you know you're saved? When you got up this morning, did you just feel it all over you? No. It don't have nothing to do with the way I feel. All right. I ain't saying I don't feel saved. Yeah. Well, there's been a time or two when I didn't feel much of nothing. Come on. And we all get there, amen? Exactly. But I'm saved because I believe His promise. That's it. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. saved. Hey, Brother Billy, but you're saying, yeah, but I believe in His promise if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just. Yes. 
to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Listen, you're going to have to get a hold of this. You ain't going to get out of here. Wow. Yeah, but if I can just hold on, if I can just endure, you ain't going to be able to endure unless you get the Word. Amen? Wow. The Word is... The, listen, we, I was raised, you know, in one of those... We put way too much emphasis on that. All right. It's good. I like it. You seen this morning, I dance a little bit myself. All right. I don't have anything against that, but you better have the Word. Because your dance ain't gonna get your dance ain't gonna get you there, amen. Whenever you're laying on your deathbed, you gotta know God's word. Because you ain't gonna be able to shout then. You ain't gonna be able to dance then. It ain't in the dance, it ain't in the shout as much as I like that. Don't write me no letters, please. I like to dance. See, I show you. I like it, but it ain't gonna get you out of here. It ain't gonna get you out of You better know you better know his word. The dance ain't gonna keep you from being deceived. Only knowing his word is gonna keep you from being deceived. You've got to know His Word for yourself. Amen? That's right. Brother David, if somebody talked about the promise of the Holy Ghost. See, that was a promise. All right. In Acts, the first chapter, Jesus had already told them. Yeah. But in Acts, the first chapter, the fourth verse says, Being assembled together with them, yeah. commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, yeah. but wait for the promise of the Father, right. which saith He, Ye have heard of Me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost Amen. not many days hence. Yeah. You see, the promise of the Father, the Comforter, Jesus said, I won't leave you comfortless. Come on. i got to go so that He can come. All right. And when He comes, He's going to baptize you with fire. Amen? Amen? The promise of the Father. Yes. And He said, you boys, wait here in Jerusalem for it. Oh. It ain't coming today, but wait for it. It's coming. Amen. So they all get together in the upper room wherever they was at at the time. I know they started in the upper room. Some historians believe they moved to somewhere else before it fell. But anyway, yeah. wherever they were at, they were seeking God. Yeah. And maybe, you know, it probably hadn't been the easiest thing. 15 days, 20 days. Some of them might have been thinking, well, when did the thing going to come? Yeah. You sure we heard Him right? Uh -huh. This promise, that he, you know, they had to keep, keep reminding themselves, yeah, but He promised. All he promised. Right. He promised. So they sought God and they sought God and they sought God till one day when the day of Pentecost had come. The Bible says they were down that they were seeking God with one accord. Hallelujah. That's what it leads us to believe. If they were in one mind, hallelujah, and they were seeking God, and all of a sudden they heard something. Yeah, rushing. Someone said, Oh, what's that? What is that? It was the sound of the promise of the Father that was coming their way. Amen? Hallelujah. When I get down and I'm beat up and I don't feel like it and I just I don't feel like going on. I don't feel like coming to church. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like reading my Bible. I get it out and I say, oh yeah, Lord, but you promised. I'm standing on your promise today. You promised me. You promised me that all things would work together. You promised me that no weapon that was formed against me would prosper. You promised me that weeping would endure it for a night. Yeah. But joy cometh in the morning. Praise God. And I'm down there waiting. All right. And I'm seeking God. And I start hearing the noise. Yeah. Oh, it's His promise. Amen. He begins to whisper promises Praise to me. Praise Hallelujah. Didn't I tell you Praise that all God. things work together for you? Good. Didn't I tell you that I'd never leave you? I'd never forsake you, but I'd go with you all the way. Didn't I tell you that weeping endures for a night, but joy is a coming in the morning. God's promises today are for you as much as they were for the men of the Old and the New Testament. God wants you to know today that His promises are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that heaven and earth will pass away, but His Word will ever remain.